Hi, I'm Elizabeth Vaughn with Chesapeake Television. Have you ever wondered what it's like to work for the city? It's truly a great place to work and it's got so many different types of positions, a wide variety of jobs to be done. So today we're going to take a look at one specific department, the purchasing department. Purchasing basically has their hands on everything we buy here in the city. But of course, that's an oversimplification of what they do. So we're going to bring in a few experts to really get down to what purchasing is all about. So let's jump right into it. We're going to start with Candace Taylor Page. So Candace, I'm hoping you can help us understand purchasing a little bit more. You know, when we hear purchasing, we often also hear procurement. So what is procurement? Procurement is an organizational function. Pretty much um, in procurement, um, our duties are to work with the departments in the city to come up with their scope of work statement of needs. What are the specifications for what they need? We also want to do a value analysis to see if this is something that the city really can get a value from. We also want to do market research of the suppliers to make sure there is competition out there for the services or goods that the city or the department requires. We also look at um, competing um, with multiple contractors and vendors um, through a negotiation process. So that way we can get the best um, quality and cost for the city. Um, we also um, deal with contract administration where we follow through to the end um, of the contract term. Um, business um, all over, whether private or public, um, uses procurement to procure services and goods at um, a good quality, a good value, at a reasonable cost for the organization and to ensure that the services provided um, are going according to the contract terms. So then there is or is there a difference between purchasing and procurement? Purchasing could be a subset of procurement. Okay. Um, you think about purchasing, you may have um, a small business or mid-sized business to where they really don't have a big um, purchasing function. Um, this may be just going down to the local Home Depot or a local supplier or maybe making low-cost um, purchases for your office um, and your department. Um, procurement is more so a greater concept. Um, mm. You're going to go to the end-to-end -end of the supply chain management. Um, such as, like I mentioned, negotiating, um, sourcing, um, you know, uh, finding good sourcing, um, mm -hmm. also making sure that you're getting the great price and the great quality, and also contract administration, making sure that the contractors are and all the services are being provided um, against the contract um, for the term of the contract. So it really is a lot more complicated than just you know, when I go online and add to cart. That's interesting. So there's really a lot more thought and process put into what you all do. So what is a procurement professional's main role within the organization? Um, procurement professional's main role is to ensure organizations receive goods, services, or construction at the best value, the best price. Um, we also make sure that um, the delivery of goods, the services, um, the costs are low and um, also ensuring that the quality is perfect um, and, and making sure that the contracts are being adhered to by the contractors and that we, if there are any issues, we do work with the contractors and also the departments to cure the issues so that way um, the contracts do not go um, into default. So. If I'm working for the purchasing department, if I'm working in procurement, what are some of those skills that I might either need to have or need to, need to be ready to develop in order to be successful? Um, some of the skills that are, um, a procurement professional would um, possess is attention to de detail, innovation, problem solving, um, rela relationship building, analytical thinking, um, strategic sourcing, um, also, you would want to know a little bit about um, financial skills, um, time management, project management, as you will be multitasking um, many, many different parts of the procurement process at one time um, with all your multiple projects that you may have. So it sounds like a lot of those skills are skills that someone can have whether or not they've ever worked in purchasing before, which 
um, is interesting for people who are maybe looking for a way to, to break into the city or to break into purchasing and procurement that, you know, you got to have had some kind of experience in your life that has led to, to those skills and be able to develop those skills. So, you know, it sounds, Candace, like you've got all those skills. I know you do great work for us here at the city. So thank you so much for all you do. And thanks for helping us understand more about purchasing and procurement. All right, next up we have Desiree Gerald. Desiree, thanks so much for sitting with us here today. Um, how long have you worked for the purchasing department? I've been with purchasing with the city of Chesapeake for just over a year now. All right, so let's go back a little bit. How did you develop an interest, an interest in purchasing and procurement? Um, I first developed an interest during my graduate program with ODU. Um, at the time, I was working as a paralegal for another locality and um, I knew that I had an interest in public service, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do with that. Um, I also knew that there wasn't a big opportunity for me to advance in the role that I was in as a paralegal. So I decided to go back to school. I got my master's in public administration. And oh, wow. um, during that program, I think I was just scanning course offerings uh, that ODU offered, and I saw a lot for public procurement. And I may or may not have had to Google the term procurement at that time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all those years ago. Um, but I'm really glad I did. I took, I think it was a strategic procurement course, and it really sparked my interest. So I went ahead and enrolled in um, their graduate certificate program. And that was really my first and only exposure to the field at that time. So that it does sound like you have a lot of background in public service and um, how did all of your background and education really develop into the skills that you needed for this job? Well, um, a lot of the skills that I developed and used as a paralegal have definitely been transferable skills into my role as a procurement specialist. Um, some off the top of my head, like just basic word processing skills, um, file management, file documentation and document management, uh, customer service. Those are some um, skills that I never knew would come in handy, but I absolutely use every day. Um, one more specific maybe to the legal, to my legal background is being able to um, research legal issues against the appropriate authorities, mm -hmm. which is another one that's really important when you're trying to abide by procurement law. Well, it, it's interesting also going back, you said you said customer service, and that's great. Mm -hmm. That's one of the pillars here at the city of Chesapeake. Yes. Really, doesn't matter what position you're in, customer service is essential. So mm -hmm. it's great to hear that, that that was something you thought of as well. Um, what are the, some of the things that you wish you had known going into this position? Well, pertaining to customer service specifically, as that's a good question, it would have been really helpful for me to have a better understanding of how a procurement specialist has two sets of customers. Mm. So as a public servant, you know always that you, you're, the citizen is your customer. You have the citizen's best interest at heart. So um, a procurement specialist, you also have another customer and that's your end user and the departments that um, use the contracts that we develop and put in place. So it can be a challenge sometimes. Um, they've got needs that need to be fulfilled and they, the things that we procure and purchase often ha are directly impact the city's operation on a day-to-day -day basis. So I guess what I'm trying to say is time is almost always of the essence. And at the same time, to fulfill your roles as a procurement specialist and your, that are more regulatory in nature, you um, like uh, ensuring that competition is is obtained yeah. it takes time, um, administrative time. So really balancing the need to meet your customers' needs, the department, mm -hmm. with um, making sure that you put in the appropriate time necessary, that administrative time to make sure you're providing um, the best competition, it really can be a challenge. And I think that would be helpful for someone who's interested in the field to know. Absolutely, and it, that really is something to be said about any job at the city, but so much more so for, for certain departments like yours that you really are serving me and my department <laughs> just yeah. as much as you're serving the residents because we all are serving the community. So True. Um, really interesting take on that. Desiree, 
what are some of your favorite things about this position? Oh, well, there's a few. Um, the one that stands out the most is that the, the work is always stimulating. I'm mm -hmm. always learning something new when I'm developing the specifications and the requirements for the contracts that uh, my user department would need or you, looking for a contract that they could use. Um, there's such a great opportunity to build relationships with multiple members of multiple departments. So you can build your network, you can build your knowledge base on various subject matters. Um, so I really appreciate that. And um, finally, probably the most is that it's fulfilling. It's, I know that myself and my colleagues are having a direct impact on the community that I live in, the city that I live in. Um, just everything from covering manholes to making sure that our public safety departments have the equipment and the gear that they need to protect me and protect my family. Um, these things matter and, and that really matters to me. From manholes to public safety. I love it. <laughs> Desiree, thank you so much for everything you do for the city. Sounds like you're doing an awesome job and we really appreciate you helping us understand a little bit more about what you do. All right, well, thanks for having me. And finally, let's bring in now Bud Cartwright. So Bud has an interesting perspective. He's been for, here with the city for a little over four years, and he came from the private sector, actually the farming sector. Really cool stuff. Great for you to be here, Bud. Thank you so much. I'm really interested to understand your perspective. So for someone who has not worked for the government per se, but who might have some relatable skills, how can those non-governmental supply acquisition sourcing skills, how can they relate to this position? Well, thanks, Liz. So coming from the non-governmental side of things, you know, working in the farm community, these, you can, you look at what skills we do in the farm community versus what government does mm -hmm. and comparison. So in my world, you know, sourcing parts, supplies, um, seed, uh, chemicals, and things of those nature, I still have that same goal that the city has in mind, which is I want to get the best quality product for the best price when I need it. So simplifying it, going into, say I'm buying fuel. Um, say I need to buy you know 2,000 gallons of fuel a month to run my tractors, et cetera. So in doing so, I would call around to sources of supply, different, different fuel supply companies, and find out what the daily price is, when they can deliver it, and then take and compile all that information and then go with the best price for the best delivery, the, my anticipated delivery time of what I need for my product, mm -hmm. and then that's what I'm gonna go with. And you can compare that process to the governmental purchasing side, which would be close to the unsealed bidding process or an RFQ or an unsealed IFB. So really, at the end of the day, I mean, that, that makes perfect sense because we are using taxpayer dollars to make these purchases. So we're trying to get the best bang for our buck, just like anybody who owns a business or works in the private sector would be doing. So that's a, thanks for making that connection. That's interesting. Um, are there any specific certifications or trainings or maybe specific degrees that people would have to have to work in purchasing? When it comes to working in purchasing, um, it really requires no no degrees, no real specific training um, to work in the purchasing division, especially as a procurement specialist one. Though we encourage that uh, procurement specialist one and even procurement specialist twos have uh, some sort of uh, either a bachelor's degree in business or marketing or uh, even pu or public procurement, um, those type of realms. And then we, we offer training, but certifications outsides through uh, taking classes through like NIGP or through um, the Virginia Institute of Procurement, uh, having those type of certifications, the VCO, VCA, CPPB, all those things uh, will greatly aid you in, in buying and procuring goods and services for the city of Chesapeake. And But I think, did I remember that you were also involved in the city's process improvement yes. certification? Tell us a little bit about that. So I was involved in the uh, process improvement cer certification for the city. Um, we have a, we are one of the few cities that have this great opportunity to, uh, to even to participate in process improvement. Uh, we have a process improvement officer uh, assigned to the city manager's office, and in that program, we offer 
Um, the white belt familiarization training for Six Sigma, Lean Six Sigma Six, um, for familiarization for any city employee. And then you have the green belt certification, which consists of a class, which this year we did it virtually, um, the first part of it virtually. So I'm kind of yellow belt certified at the moment. Um, and with that, we did um, three full days of online training and then started our project. So starting that project um, and working through that and then completing the last three days of the uh, in-classroom portion, whenever we can do that, will get me um, professionally certified as a, as a master, as a green belt. You can go as far as a master black belt um, wow. with a little bit of training and time and effort. Um, so it's a very unique opportunity for you to assist the city with improving processes and improving workflows and things that not only do they affect the employee, but it gives the, the citizen a better turnaround. I, I think that's a great example of just one of the many ways where we here at the city, we're going to give people the opportunities to um, participate in these kind of certifications and we're going to encourage you to continue learning and growing. Um, we're just, you know, we want to get the right people in the door and then we're going to help you out to keep keep going up. And so, you know, speaking of going up, um, procurement specialist one is an entry level position. Is there any room to grow from there? Yes, Liz, there's room to grow within, within the procurement field in the city of Chesapeake. We have the entry level procurement specialist one. Uh, we have procurement specialist two position, which is I am. We have procurement supervisor position. We have a procurement management position, and ultimately we have a procurement administrator position. Um, as far as growth, um, we can, you know, moving from position to position uh, when positions come available um, is is a good thing here in the city. It does allow us that growth pattern. Uh, professional wise, we we encourage everybody to take training to seek out certifications, seek out classes. We are constantly doing some kind of training and professional growth, whether it's sending people to the Virginia Institute of Procurement for their, their VCA, uh, Virginia Contracting Associate Certification or the VCO, Virginia Contracting Officer Certification, or even sent, trying to send people through NIGP for the CPPB, um, which is more of a national certification recognized for purchasing. And then if you get in supervising le supervisory level, you can do like the CPPM, which is a management level um, purchasing certification. And we encourage throughout the city um, training internally as well. We have training internally in our apartment. Uh, we have training internally through HR, through learning, learning management system, um, professional development. We already mentioned the uh, the Lean Six Sigma Six training and the Green Belt and Yellow Belt and the White Belt training. Uh, that's all available for anybody that wants to do that. We have tuition reimbursement with the City of Chesapeake as well. So, you know, basically you can come in and set your goal and there are plenty of things offered throughout the city to be able to assist you in making those goals and developing professionally and moving up through the ranks within the city. All right, but final question, what do you enjoy most about your, your job in public procurement? So I enjoy the teamwork in public procurement. Um, not only in the office, we all have to work together as a team. We work through our problems together as a team. Uh, management's very supportive of us being a team. Um, the whole team concept in the city, as well as we have to work as team players with the departments that we, we service. I service currently some major departments. I service the sheriff's office, service the police department, service the fire department, service central fleet. Um, those departments are, are very busy, um, high turnaround, high volume type departments. And they have some very sensitive needs at times. But the, what I enjoy the most is seeing those the quality equipment that we got for the best value out on the streets. Every time I see a police car go down the road, I was like, hey, I bought that. That's a sense of purpose. I see a brand new fire truck get delivered that's going to provide services for the city. And I look at that and I was like, hey, you know, I help, I help build that. I help buy that. And it gives a great sense of honor to be here in the city and see the fruits of your labor, whether it's law enforcement uniforms and how sharp our police and sheriff's deputies and our firefighters look, um, to 
acquisitions of a building. You know, I'm working on a construction project right now for a uh, a new joint city um, school garage maintenance facility for oh. our large fleet and our school buses for the city. And to see the two entities work together, it's uh, it's very satisfying of how what we do with resources to pull together and come up with the best outcome uh, to serve our citizens. That's really cool. I want to be able to say that I helped purchase a fire truck or a whole building. Really interesting stuff, Bud. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for everything you do for our city. And as a taxpayer, I thank you and Desiree and Candace and everybody with the purchasing department for making good use of our taxpayer dollars. Uh, for anybody else who wants to learn more about the purchasing department or if perhaps you're interested in getting a job, you can find all the openings at cityofchesapeake.net.